Support Narrative's independent journalism at patreon.com forward slash narrative and check out our podcast wherever you get your podcasts and don't forget to subscribe and download. when the managers walk down the hall or cross a threshold in history, delivering articles of impeachment against the President of the United States for abuse of power and obstruction of the House. As we make that history, we will be making progress for the American people, progress in support of our Constitution, progress in honor of the sacrifice and the vision of our founders, progress in honor of the sacrifice of our men and women in uniform, and progress for the future of our children. Make it be very clear that this president will be held accountable, that no one is above the law, and uh, that no future president should ever entertain the idea that Article One, I mean, excuse me, Article Two, says that he can do whatever he wants. So that was just a couple of hours ago, live. Um, we watched it happen on all the cable networks. I'm here with Dina Grayson, um, our good friend who, who knows the inside of Congress better than anybody else. Um, what a moment today, Dina. I mean, that was really powerful to see them, to see uh, Nancy Pelosi sign the articles, but also the entire ritual of them uh, going over to the Senate, the managers handing over the articles of impeach impeachment. Tell me more about your thoughts as you were watching that. Well, it's a historic day, Zev, and, and it's a somber day. I don't, I, I do, you know, obviously a part of me is um, relieved, I think is probably the right word, that Donald Trump is finally paying for his crimes against our country. Uh, he will be forever impeached, no matter how much the Republicans in the Senate try to cover up his crimes. Uh, you know, so a somber day. Um, and I, I don't think that anyone sh should be happy that this is happening to our country. But again, there's certainly a strong sense of relief that, um, you know, justice is being delivered and as well Trump deserves. Absolutely. It's a, it's a powerful day that, you know, you've worked tirelessly for and, and many others. I should explain why I have a forest behind me. Uh, I'm in New York City for a change because uh, we're, you know, I'm doing a lot of research and uh, investigation uh, on, on a big project we're working on. And so it's exciting to be here back in New York City, especially uh, at this time when these articles of impeachment are being handed down. And, you know, we have to just register the fact that uh, oh, the forest, by the way, is my friend's uh, interior design. And I'm not commenting about it. I'm just thankful he's letting me use it. So thank you. Um, so tomorrow, I guess the trial begins. The trial of Donald Trump begins. And, it, you know, it's the first time he is going on trial. It's a significant event in his life because there's been plenty of opportunity before this for him to be on trial. But this is, you know, truly historic. We've we've only seen this once before. Um, is that correct? Once before that we've seen a full trial, twice or once. I can't. Uh, Johnson. Yeah. Johnson was there was a trial and he was acquitted by just a couple of votes. But uh, long before the advent of uh, live TV, let alone television. Yeah. So many, many, many years ago. So Andrew Johnson certainly he was impeached and then again escaped uh, a conviction, I believe, by a single vote in the Senate, if I recall correctly. You're you're really good at this stuff. So um, a triumphant moment for Nancy Pelosi because she has been gambling on this, um, and and she's a smart gambler because she knows what she's doing. Obviously, because we wouldn't have gotten to the stage. Also a triumphant moment for the managers, which she announced today. She's gone for people who are obviously skilled in being in courthouses and, and know their way around the judicial system. Explain that decision to me. Well, sure. I mean, first of all, I, I, I wouldn't describe Speaker Pelosi as triumphant. I, you know, this is something that she's really proceeded with, I think, cautiously, judiciously, and, and, and really understands the weight um, of impeachment. Good point. And, you know, and having said that, you know, she's a pro. I think that a lot of folks are claiming, I saw some headlines today that, oh, um, you know, Pelosi lost in this whole battle with Mitch McConnell. No, she didn't because the heat is enormous on swing state senators. And I know we'll cover that later in the show, mm -hmm. uh, Zev. But, you know, with respect to the impeachment managers, it was an interesting list. I think there were some, some very obvious choices on there with both uh, uh, 
Chairman Adam Schiff and Chairman uh, Nadler, uh, who chair the respective intelligence and judiciary committees. And thank you for the helpful graphic. This is terrific. And then there were, you know, Zoe, Zoe Lofgren, who actually has uh, took part in the Nixon impeachment uh, proceedings and the led up to his resignation. So she, she was, I believe, like an aide back then. Yeah. She was around for the Clinton impeachment. So she's a she's a veteran and a pro. And I think that, that she's going to be very valuable. And then some very talented uh, litigators, uh, and some newer, fresher faces to Congress in Congresswoman Garcia, Congressman Crow, as well as uh, Hakeem Jeffries, of whom a lot of people know. And then I saved really kind of my favorite for last, which is my personal Congresswoman, Val Demings. Right. And anyone who's seen Val Demings, you don't mess with Congresswoman Demings. And uh, <laughs> I think she was an inspired choice. I think a great choice by uh, the speaker. So I, I think there are some other folks I would have liked to have seen personally, and everyone has their own favorite. In addition to this great crop of uh, litigators, I would have loved to have seen my also my adopted congressman, as I like to call him, Congressman Ted Lieu from California. Uh, so anybody who can recall him when he faced down Jeff Sessions, you know, were you lying then? Were you lying now? Mm. I mean, you know, he's a he's a former JAG and is a veteran of the United States Air Force. And uh, Congressman Lou would have been one of my he was kind of my my stealthy uh, favorite uh, uh, who didn't make it. But certainly some great names and faces that yeah. I think uh, every American should be proud are yeah, representing us. It would have been great to see uh, Congressman Lou there. But I think, you know, the the priorities must have been to get people from sort of the the traditional red states or at least the swing states. It looks like um, she's got that yeah, with Jason some... Crow. And uh, I don't know very much about Silva, Sylvia Garcia. Um, do you know much about her? A little bit about her, you know, and her background. And I think, again, she'll be a good choice. Uh, she's from Texas, one of the newer members of Congress. So I, I, you know, I think she'll be a great choice. But, you know, Val Demings is from, you know, my congresswoman. Back to yeah. her, you know, she's a from a key swing state and has a long uh, career in, in criminal justice here in central Florida. So I think she's a terrific choice as her. well. She's terrific. I, 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 she'll she, be great. And she, she, she's not she knows she knows she knows how to make crooks squirm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She doesn't take any prisoners. She's really, really fantastic. I really enjoy her testimony, uh, her, her questioning. Sorry. And then Jason Crow is also pretty impressive. I think you know, as a newcomer, yeah. he certainly Agreed. has been able to to stake a claim. Now they've all been there for a while. Now they're they're not so new anymore. Uh, but it's a good crop. They, I guess, take. Uh, when do they start? When do they start their their proceedings? Tomorrow there's an oaths. There's oaths that are administered to the senators. An oath book. I'm told. That they all have to sign Yeah, so in I on. think we even have to back up. You know, I, what happens tomorrow, my understanding uh, is, again, this is not the engrossment process, right. as we were discussing earlier today. And I had to familiarize with the sort of, uh, fortunately for our country, we, we haven't impeached too many presidents. Right. Uh, so I had to familiarize myself with really some arcane and, and rather obscure, I should say, uh, procedures, uh, congressional procedures. So my understanding is that today the House sent a formal notification to the Senate that they that w what they had done. Hey, guess what? We impeached Trump in case you were like hiding under a rock for the last month. Uh, so then what happens is the Senate sends a message back. There's a lot of formality. I mean, we, we the Congress does not operate in the digital era. They operate in still back in the horse and buggy era, which there's some kind of, I think, some cool, cool procedures, yeah. you know, still here in history. I guess I should say tradition. So then the Senate will now send back a notification. OK, yeah, we're, we're, we're ready to formally receive the articles of impeachment from the House. And then so tomorrow, the impeachment managers will then walk over physically with the articles of impeachment okay. to the other side of Congress and deliver them. So to me, that will certainly be a momentous occasion. Uh, and then, you know, I think we know what happens from there. But I. So the Chief uh. <laughs> Justice takes takes his place tomorrow. That's going to be interesting. Um, and then I think they're they're installing television sets uh, so people can see uh, what's going on. That's not something they traditionally have on the Senate floor. Uh, and then the, this oath book and the oaths, that's going to be a very, uh, I think, a jarring moment for people because, you know, as someone mentioned when I was watching on, on TV earlier, these senators have sort of been observers like you and I of, of a process that's been going on in the House. Now well, I would say that some have been observers, yeah. uh, but I think part of the problem is is that some have been, you know, are, you know, the Senate is a jury. That mm -hmm. is the key here. Right. So this Supreme Court Justice Chief Justice Roberts will actually serve as sort of the judge, the arbiter. But but the actual jury here now is the Senate. And what has Mitch McConnell done? 
He is a crooked juror with a strong bias, and he is tainting, literally tainting, and God only knows what's happening behind the scenes, right, with mm -hmm. these swing state senators of the promises that are being made for millions of dollars of help into their races. I mean, I, I, yeah. this has certainly not a, been a fair and open process in the Senate. And now, I do think have that, seem, that is something like that's four concerning. votes that are going to be voting for at least the additional witnesses. So that's that's uh, at least at least that looks like it's going to be the first uh, the first battle. And it looks like that will happen. At least uh, I, I think I think say. that's right. And I think that uh, that that the, all the all of us here, you know, all of all of our all of our viewers today here, Zev, on your mm. show, your fabulous show, need to know that those phone calls and particular targeting these key swing state Republicans, such right. as Susan Collins in Maine in particular, who seems to be kind of the leader of this, uh, I should say, reluctant group of um cowards uh, to be well, quite she's honest playing both sides for sure i mean she's got to be very careful i can totally see how uh you know she's got to appeal to both sides and she's got to look reluctant until there, when there, she votes. there's but, only one side here is yeah. the side of truth and justice well, that is it that. it's very simple it's very simple if there's, there's nothing to hide and if the president did nothing wrong then they should want the evidence out in the open that's the reality here right. and instead what we're seeing is the usual complicit Republicans involved directly in the cover up. And I think, well, you know, you're, you're used to these sort of dirty tricks when it's typical politics. But we're now in this, you know, it, you would think that at least they'd kind of play the game and pretend, you know, that, that they were going to be these in, impartial jurors. And I'm speaking yeah. when I say they in particular, but their ringleader, uh, Mitch McConnell. But, you know, he doesn't even bother to play the game. It's uh, it's, very, it's a very sad, sad statement. Yeah. Look, I think the more evidence that's going to come out, and we already saw another dump of new evidence from Les Parnas today, uh, and, <laughs> and we'll go through some of the other stuff a little bit later on in the show. You know, there is compelling evidence that's going to be coming out, uh, and John Bolton testifying, all these other potential witnesses. It's going to make these guys look more and more foolish if they stay on this side of, of denying what seems to be the, well, the obvious facts before them. It doesn't mean they'll. Seb, you, know. you you hit you hit the nail on the head, but frankly, we've we've they've already the Republicans have already crossed the Rubicon. Okay, mm. we had compelling evidence that Rudy Giuliani's now this is Donald Trump's personal attorney that Rudy Giuliani's Ukraine Gate henchman conspired to spy on the ambassador. They had and they had somebody quote unquote on the inside of the U.S. embassy in Kiev. They knew that whether or not her phone was on, her computer was on, if how many visitors she had, with whom she was speaking. And then there were these very menacing messages about how well you can get people in Ukraine. I'm paraphrasing here. You can get people in Ukraine to do anything for money if you pay the right price, yeah. essentially. It did seem, LOL it seemed very disturbing. If Republicans won't stand up for public servants, these mm. are nonpartisan public servants that are representing our country that are that are and you know ambassador Yovanovitch said i felt threatened i quickly wanted to take a look at the at the team for uh donald trump which is uh defending him trump's defenders i'm so sorry can i try not to laugh <laughs> <laughs> i mean jay seculo uh, you're it's right from jay there. seculo it's live got, it's a great show how, do you ever watch it <laughs> how how many how many how many like just criminal pots of money to, i mean this guy this guy is always hooking up with shady characters he's kind of always arising how many different kind of shady characters has he been in, interacting with of kind of trump's cronies i oh, mean so the, the list is long and sorted that is that i'm certain of. pat cipolloni by the way i was surprised or not very surprised i should say to find out that he worked at kirkland and ellis which is sort no of way. the place Hashtag that Bill shocker. Barr comes from and the place where Alex Acosta comes from and we, you know, a few other people who are prominent in sort of these incredible defenses against wow. congressional uh, oversight. They all seem to come from one law firm because there are no others, it seems, uh, on, the, on the Republican side. And then there's Pat Philbin and Michael Purpura who are, who are you know, the, the deputies in the defense. I don't know very much about them, but I do know that Purpura has, is, has a specialty in basically battling congressional tests well, I got to tell you something. My money is on Adam Schiff. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> he, he's going to bat lead off. He's going to bat clean up. I mean, everything. This guy knows the evidence. He has uh, been an incredibly strong leader in the House of really fighting for f truth and justice. And I think that the thing about Adam Schiff is he's unflappable. Mm. He's really 
a straight he's a straight shooter he's very clear and concise in the way he speaks which i think is is important yeah. especially in the television era and soundbite era but he's also just this very calm rational guy and he's not going to take any crap from these people it's, it's it, i it's not i not his really first rodeo he's done this before so he knows what it feels like there i mean it's certainly not with the president of the united states but he's done uh, trials like this before and he certainly his performance and, and, the, and the way they structured the, the testimony stage of this was, was phenomenal. I mean, they really were able to, to think in a, in, a, in a TV narrative sense as well. They were able to roll it out for an audience so it was understandable. Uh, but also the, all the, uh, you know, they had very few loose ends at the end of all of that, except for maybe uh, Devin Nunes and, and who knows where that will land up. Um, but they did a great job. <laughs> Another be, Uber ride, right? Right. Oh, to, to, to you know, to uh, where did you go? Libya oh, and somewhere else. Support Narrative's independent journalism at patreon.com forward slash narrative and check out our podcast wherever you get your podcasts and don't forget to subscribe and download. Mm -hmm.